My name is Jared Seward. I am the associate pastor at Higher Purpose Church, and I would like to welcome you to our Three Conversations Senior Pastors Open Forum. As you know, Three Conversations has been going on now, the initiative for three months, but we wanted to take an opportunity tonight to have our pastors, several of them from the initiative, reflect on what it has meant to them personally as well as answer and field questions from lay people in the churches. So it's a wonderful opportunity to just reflect on what's happened, but also to move forward with um, questions and answers. And without further ado, I would like to invite Pastor Will Green to give the opening prayer, and he will be immediately followed by Pastor Lawrence Williams, who will provide some opening comments and context for us. Thanks. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just come to you thanking you for another opportunity to gather. Lord, we thank you for the diversity that you've assembled. Lord, we thank you for the heart of the pastors, the heart of the lay people. Lord, we thank you for the direction of Pastor Williams, Lord God. And Father God, we just pray right now that you open our hearts and minds, Lord God, that we might continue to be receptive, that we might continue to strive to work together, Lord God, to value all of your people, to love uh, each other as you have loved us and to be the called according to your purpose. Lord, we love you, we honor you, and we bless your name. In Christ's name we pray, amen. Okay, well, thank you for that, and, and good evening, everyone. Um, we are so glad that you're here uh, for our Senior Pastors Open Forum. So just a few thoughts in terms of why are we here and why are we doing what we're doing? As you guys know, we are living in a time of tension and turmoil around this whole topic of racism and equity. Um, the, as I like to phrase it, the world is having a conversation and it's a really difficult conversation that's revolting, resulting in violence and sometimes death. And I think that's largely because the church has not been involved. I also feel strongly, and I think all of the, the pastors here, as we've been talking over the last few weeks, would agree that you know, you can legislate, uh, you know, rules around this, you could, uh, you know, allocate funds towards this, but the church is the only group that can deal with the root cause of the problem, because the root cause is sin, and um, only the love of Christ can really deal with that, and, and I believe, therefore, the church, uh, we are God's essential services on the earth uh, that can really help deal with the root cause, and so uh, this this initiative, I think, is critical on so many fronts in so many ways and so timely um, that uh, I'm, I'm just so excited and, and a little bit overwhelmed, quite honestly, uh, being here and a part of this. Um, as you guys know, uh, when Jesus came to uh, bring the usher in the church, uh, he took 12 people and ultimately changed the world. And I believe uh, in that model, we, we see that we don't necessarily need a whole lot of people to make a huge difference. Um, but even with that, there's a, roughly a dozen or so churches that are part of this initiative. And I believe the impact uh, that has been made and will be made uh, will be uh, very, very significant towards addressing this really difficult problem. Uh, our first event was the Day of Prayer, which was just a real powerful, powerful time. And as we had the different pastors come in and be able to pray and share uh, from their hearts and in prayer, we had worship, we had time uh, with scripture. It was a real blessing and I think a great way to start this off. But tonight what we want to do is really have an opportunity for um, a number of the pastors who have been part of this conversation over the last few months to just share our hearts and just really uh, share uh, the impact that these conversations have had on us. And I can tell you personally, it's, it's been, uh, it's had a tremendous impact on me. Um, and you'll hear from the other pastors as well. And this is an opportunity now to share our hearts with the congregations. And so there's a, there's a handful of folks here who are uh, here to really just ask questions, have some exchange, have some dialogue. And uh, we pray that it does just that. It helps you to see and hear our hearts. And, and we want to be able to hear from your hearts as well as we continue to go forward in this initiative. So with that, uh, please uh, make sure you ask any questions that you have. We'll do our best to answer them. Uh, it would be a very informal time. And uh, at the end, we're gonna share about next steps, a couple things that will be exciting and uh, something that everyone can participate in. And so uh, with that, just welcome. And uh, again, let's join into the conversation. 
Thank you, Pastor Lawrence. At this time, we're going to move forward into the pastor's forum portion where each pastor that is participating that has been a part of three conversations will have a chance to talk about how being a part of three conversations has impacted them personally. And so I'm going to go through the list. I will give the pastor's name in their church and then that pastor will speak and then I will move uh, down the list as well. But I'm so excited to begin this time. And we are going to start with Pastor Gavin Gabriel from Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. Good evening. Um, I believe that I am the youngest pastor on, on, the, on the call tonight. Um, being the, the younger uh, kid on the block, so to speak, um, Three Conversations and Three Conversations Initiative and hearing from um, older Caucasian pastors in general, in, uh, in general about uh, from their perspective and uh, even, just, even just hearing where people didn't understand certain things was very uh, enlightening to me. Um, it helped me to look at things through the Christian lens that I should have been looking at them. Um, before we started this conversation, um, there was a small period of time in between George Floyd's death and uh, the start of this conversation that I was full of anger. Um, and I couldn't see anything um, outside of just the destruction that was happening. And it felt like uh, the right people didn't care and so getting on this call and being a part of this initiative um, showed me that the right people do care. Um, and so thank you all for, for your candor and for, um, for being vulnerable enough to, to be in the space. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor Gavin. We're going to move next to Pastor Jan Britton from Williamson's Chapel United Methodist Church. Um, I have been extremely blessed to be part of these conversations. I'm so appreciative of the invitation when it came, and I've made it a priority. I, I think I've been at all of them except when I got called away for a family emergency and couldn't be at one. Um, but it's been important to me to be part of them. Uh, as we've moved through this time of such tension and um, conflict, between, not just between the races, but just between all kinds of people. Um, it, it has struck me that maybe the most important thing we can do as individuals is form friendships with people who are different from us. And I realize that though I have had friends in the past of different races, and I have colleagues of different races, and I have members of different races, I do not currently have what I would call a personal friend, an everyday friend that is of another race. And what I felt like these conversations have done for me has given me the beginning of a road into a relationship with individuals who have, who are a different race, who have a different perspective on these things. And we, you know, it's going to take, we got to come out of COVID-19. We got to spend some time face to face um, to really build the friendships. But I see a way forward for that because I've come to really like the people I'm having this conversation with um, and on my way to, to loving the people personally, not generally, but personally. Uh, so what it's meant most to me is the opportunity for relationships, which is what I really think can change people in our world or those key relationships. So thank you, Pastor Lawrence and everybody else for your openness and inclusion. Thank you, Pastor Jan. Now we're going to have Pastor Will Green from Faith United Methodist Church. Um, hello again, everyone. Um, for me, the entire process has been eye-opening. Um, in our first conversations with just the Black pastors, we had a much larger number of folks, and it was quite frankly, a little overwhelming to hear the frustration and the, the hurt of some of the older 
of pastors who had lived through probably generations and decades of uh, what we were seeing played out on TV in front of us. And that being the murder of George, George Floyd, the, you know, Maude Aubrey. I mean, they, they had just seen so much of it. And quite frankly, they were not open to continuing the conversation. Um, but the thing that struck me the most is hearing the empathy of the white pastors who were involved. Um, I was overwhelmed to, to, to see that what I already knew is that there's three sides to every story. That's, that's your side, my side, and then there's the truth. And then from their perspectives, a lot of times they just simply hadn't seen a lot of the things that we have learned, unfortunately, to deal with on a daily basis. Things that I've grown up with as realities, things that I've seen over and over again, that were new to them and, and they were shocked and they were hurt and it pained them and they listened to our stories and they, and I, and, and I, and I, and I saw tears and, I, and I, I heard their voices crack because they were genuinely impacted by our struggle. And in me, it, it, it changed me because when I heard their empathy and they shared their stories, I realized that, that not only is there, is there a lens in which they see me, but there's a lens in which I see them. I heard stories about white pastors speaking out and then being fired. I heard stories about white pastors taking a stand and being ostracized from their churches. And so I realized this sin of racism is much bigger than I originally anticipated, much bigger than I originally estimated. And you can see the enemy at work. But I've been encouraged at seeing what Christ can do, how the Holy Spirit can, can bring us together in the spirit of unity and allow all of us to come together, to have conversations, to plead the blood of Jesus, and to move forward together. Thank you, Pastor Will. We've got Pastor Ken Shivers now from Lighthouse Church. Thank you. It's been an honor to be a part of this. For, for me, it's been something growing in my heart uh, for a few years. But then after Memorial Weekend and seeing our country kind of split apart and the real conversations happening, um, I really became a, more of a burden. Uh, to me and it became clear to me that I wanted my church to understand and the community, especially the church community, to understand this is a gospel issue. This is something that flows out of the work, person and work of Jesus Christ and what we proclaim. It's not something on the side. It's not periphery. It's not something we can just choose whether we want to be a part of this or not, but it really became a burden. And so when I received the invitation to be a part of this, I said, this is what my heart has been wanting. And I, so I so appreciate the leadership of Pastor Lawrence. And it's been a wonderful to get to know the other pastors. I like the other pastors have also can't wait to do more in person. And I really feel like this is kind of phase one and looking forward to two, three, and four and uh, being a more of a long-term uh, issue for us. It, it has um, given me hope to see the unity across the body of Christ. And uh, that's my prayer that that continues. Because um, as Pastor Lawrence has said numerous times, we want the church to speak, be on the forefront, because we have the truth, we have the gospel. Um, and that's, and we have real hope in that. And, um, but I it's also just feel like, um, it's been a privilege and an honor to hear the stories from the black pastors. I, I, uh, the, the night we spent together on the zoom call and heard the stories it, just to realize, um, what it means to my brothers in Christ right here in Mooresville, what they're going through. It's no longer theoretical. It's no longer something that's happening just in Minneapolis or Louisville or other places. It's happening right here. Um, and so, and I was particularly taken, I think it was Pastor Will 
brought up uh, Galatians 6, 2 about bearing each other's burdens. Um, and that passage has really stuck uh, since then. And it's been a part of my communication with my uh, congregation about this. So um, it really has been a privilege and an honor to be a part of this. And I look forward to continuing. Thank you, Pastor Ken. Now, Pastor Inger Manchester from Fieldstone Presbyterian Church. Hi. Um, you know, right from the beginning, I think I began doing this almost out of a um, curiosity because I feel so sheltered um, because none of these things really have touched me personally. And so when I heard the stories from the Black pastors at, and, and how they were very consistent and how um, they just, Black people have to face all these things that white people take for granted even though you kind of hear that um on the news or in books or wherever you're reading it or hearing it to have it actually said to you and know that it's happening in your community was completely shocking i, I it, it just shocked me um and i also know um, and appreciate for myself at least that keeping this to the forefront and having consistency is so important for me. It's almost like um, when you're on an airplane and, it, and you, there's an emergency, you have to put the mask on first before you can serve others. Um, and I think right now as I'm learning and gathering and being part of these meetings and also, very importantly, taking the time to read and learn myself because it's not the responsibility of everyone else to teach me. Um, that will help me be a better pastor and a better servant of Christ. And that is my goal as it is the goal, I believe, of all of the pastors here. We have that in common and it's a beautiful thing. Thank you, Pastor Inger. Now, Pastor Lawrence Williams from Higher Purpose Church. So I have to tell you that for me, this whole experience has been transformational in a major way. You know, back in the summer when George Floyd first died, I have to tell you, I did not want to watch the video. I did not want to engage in conversation. In fact, I distinctly remember arguing with the Lord, hey, I want to get ready for Pentecost Sunday. I don't want to talk about this. And it wasn't because I didn't care. It was honestly because I didn't think it would make a difference. You know, I've seen this video before, right? Different situation, different circumstances, but I've seen so many different uh, situations that it just feels to me has created outrage has created frustration, has created pain. And, and we've done conversations before, right? We've had gatherings before where we've had, you know, we've come together and we've prayed once and, um, you know, and then somebody mentioned earlier, we just left and, and we kind of go back to business as usual until we have another issue. But I gotta say this particular time was different. This particular time, uh, there, there, there was something that was, that's, that's happening, I think in this country, there was something I know that's happened in my spirit and so, in, in actually uh, reaching out and, and seeing, hey, what other pastors could resonate with this? I got to say that whatever that thing that is, that started, it continued. And in our conversations, it really has stirred me. I mean, to hear uh, the reflections from the white pastors. Obviously, I know my story. I know, uh, you know, I'm familiar with, you know, the black people's perspectives in general, but hearing uh, from some of the white pastors and their reflection in their hearts um, and understanding that it's not easy um, either from your sides, knowing that you have to wrestle with you know, your congregations as you speak out and deal with these issues, it has changed me, it has impacted me. And I gotta say, I am just, I'm, I'm motivated right now. I, I believe my faith is stirred. I'm, I'm, from what I've seen, I, I have an expectation now that if we continue to move this thing forward, it, this can spread not just to our congregations, that's just one piece. But I see the town being impacted. I see the, the, the county being impacted and beyond. And so for me, I'm, I'm impressed. I'm excited. I'm, I'm motivated. And uh, I'm going to stop talking right now and, uh, and say thank you. Thank you, Pastor Lawrence. Now we're going to have Pastor Tom Schnitzlein from Vanderburg United Methodist Church. Thank you, Jared. And uh, thank you, Pastor Lawrence, for your leadership in this initiative as well. 
Um, myself, my family uh, lived in Birmingham, Alabama, and they were there in 1963 when the 16th Street Baptist Church was bombed. Um, I didn't know about this because I was born five years later. Um, I just learned recently in talking about this whole initiative with my older sister. She said that uh, apparently a number of ministers in the area got together after that um, and kind of composed a letter saying, hey, we're all at fault for this. Um, then the minister at my parents' church read that and on Sunday, and apparently by Tuesday or Wednesday, he was out of the parsonage. He was kicked out of the church. Um, my parents changed churches. And I would love to say that I, I sit on a moral high ground because of that. Um, but they changed churches because theirs was too racist, as if there's an acceptable level of racism. Um, so I grew up in a white household and mainly white schools, white neighborhood. I, I was not equipped uh, to deal with the complexities of, of racism and of differences. And sadly, even to know that I had been missing something in my life without having that black perspective, um, the heritage and the culture that just enriches so many things. And I'm, learning more and more about that. Um, been reading books, watching movies. Uh, fortunately, our denomination has a uh, commission on our uh, race and reconciliation. So I've been taking some of their online courses um, and really trying to educate myself a little more. Um, when Pastor Will Green talked about some of the pastors who were weeping at that first meeting when we got together, one of those was me. Um, it, it was as though Jonathan had just pointed the finger and said, you are the man. Um, and I, I needed to hear that even more. I mean, I, I thought I was educated. I thought I was enlightened, you know, I thought I was woke, but I was really broke, uh, so to speak. Um, and when I heard the perspectives of black pastors of what they go through every single day, it, it, it tore my heart out. Um, and I mean, when I, I think this has been going on for a while. The only difference is, is that now we, we all have cell phones and, uh, there's videos of things like George Floyd that are in your face and, and I, you know, you, we can't ignore it anymore. Neither can the world. And I hope that with the help of the Holy Spirit, um, I'll echo Pastor Lawrence's uh, sentiments that I, I do feel that something different is happening here. I feel the, the spirit stirring in Mooresville and I'm, I'm really looking forward to what the future might hold. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Tom. And then uh, we will have Pastor Byron Wicker from River Life Fellowship Church. Well, I wanna thank everybody for letting me be a part of this. Uh, thank you, Pastor Lawrence, for leading it. Um, for me, um, when I heard about it, I, I immediately wanted to be a part because I feel like this is an important issue. I mean, on a personal level, I've, uh, I've always had a desire to uh, relate to black people and brown people for that matter, because I feel like they have something to offer, uh, just as all races do. So I've, I've tried, you know, in my life, even though I'm from the South uh, and from an age that was very racist, um, to really want to be able to engage with black people and so i felt like this would be a great opportunity and i really do believe the church has a, a great responsibility to bring a voice and just not let hollywood and corporate america and the government and all these other voices that are speaking on this because really we we really do have the answer and so i've been very blessed and 
for black pastors and the white pastors. I feel like all of it's been very enlightening. It's been helpful to me. It's been encouraging to me. And so I just, it's been worth the time to put into it. I believe we have to, to you know, continue pursuing it. And I want to continue pursuing it. I believe it's something that really is on the father's heart that we really a family each other. My my story. So thank you, Pastor Byron. Um, so that concludes hearing from our pastors tonight. We thank you for your honesty and vulnerability and for bringing your own perspective to how what this has meant to you over the past three months. I think, as you could tell, each person was impacted in some different ways, but there was a lot of sense of unity as well between them. At this time, we are going to...